Oh, good morning, my hot ears. A very, very good morning to you. It is me, Scotty McClure, and we are, of course, live on the World's Top live stream, Facebook Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to show number 16 of our lockdown live. Good morning, McClure, number 16. How good is that? Your job, of course, is to tell Ted, to tell Ted, to tell Ted, to tell Ted that Scotty McClure is live streaming just for you and saying dinky do on Facebook Live. So get the message out there, I say. Tell everybody you're watching the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. There's Jack on first this morning. Excellent, Jack. You're very, very good at that. Getting very, very slick. Excellent stuff. And welcome, 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 I say. Great to have you with us. There's uh, Kareem, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't think I am. Good morning, Kareem. Lovely to have you with us. And a dinky do from Scotty McClue. Hello, Scotty McClue, says Kareem. Cameron Filson is watching dinky do. Welcome, Cameron. Lovely to have you with us and a very good morning. Welcome to all of you to show number 16. How good is that? We have lasted 16 hours together, you and I, in our lockdown lives. There we are. Is that not absolutely incredible? Now, stick your television off because this is what it's all about. This is where it's at. I shall just do some sharing to remind everybody. And can I suggest... You all do the same, of course, very important, because the show depends on the sharing. It's a sharing show. I am an early young man, Scotty. You are indeed an early young man, Jack. Very, very good. That will stand you in excellent stead for the top job that you are going to have uh, very, very soon in life. How could I miss one of your streams, Jack? How could anybody miss one of my streams? This is what I don't understand. Scotty McClure, I shared excellent cream. I'm just going to do the same. I'll uh, share with the big one this morning, right away, the big Scotty McClure page, the 6001. And uh, <clears throat> just let everybody know what's happening. And we'll do this throughout this morning. It's different. I noticed we had a nice... Uh, Figure joined us yesterday, so there we are. Nice uh, 1,200 of you to date. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Did you do, my friends? Uh, Stephen McMahon. Good morning, Stephen. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, so glad you could all join us on the stream. There we are. There's the first share coming up. So I'll uh, share to my story. <clears throat> Just let everybody know that we're live. I've got the trusty tea with me, the Errol Grey. Mm, none of your nonsense here, you know. Ah, Diane Marchand. Good morning, Scotty. Lovely to see you, Sir Chiri. Delighted to have you with us, Diane. It's a privilege. David Jack and David Distance watching, and David Lafferty. You've got to be called David to come on this morning. So there we are. Excellent. We like that. And uh, another share, lots and lots of sharing. Another share to the uh, page, to the big page, the big Scotty McClue page. Now, guys, just to put you in the picture, there are several genuine Scotty McClue pages on there. There's Dinky Doo. There's uh, www.scotty-mcclue.com uh, for the website. There's Stuart Smith watching us. Good morning, Stuart. Lovely to have you with us. Dinky Doo, Scotty, says Gareth Collins. Good morning, Gareth. Great to have you with us. So there we are. I shall just share with uh, the Scotty McClue page. That's it. And just let them know that we're live now. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is what the whole of the human race should be doing. Watching Scotty McClure because you can stick off your television and radio. There's nothing on there to beat this. Mark Hampshire, John Jones, Ian Kerr, Callum McSwan, a very good morning to you, Scotty, on this fine sunny morning. I hope you and the nation have a great day, Callum McSwan. Now that you've been on and you've sent us your felicitations, we will indeed have a great day. Fabulous. Thank you very much for that. Superb stuff. Um, David McClellan's watching. Welcome, David. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo. 
Did I just cheer there? I think I did, yes. Good. And we'll share to the groups. Let the groups know what's happening as well. Oh, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment, I say on here. Morning, my lord, says John Jones. John Jones, I don't know if you're a big movie buff, but if you ever get the chance to see Remains of the Day, Anthony Hopkins playing the butler at a great country house, James Fox playing the lord, Emma Thompson playing the housekeeper. I mean, a real all-star studied cast. Fabulous, fabulous movie. And it's really all about the appeasement movement in the 1930s. It was wonderful. The late 1920s and the mid-1930s. Wonderful stuff. And it goes on till just after the Second World War, up until, I would say, about 1960. That kind of stuff when uh, the House of Soul and his Lordship by that time had passed away. Um, so it's well, well worth a look. Morning, my Lord. Uh, there's a wonderful moment in it when um, his father gets hired as the butler and the interview is absolutely incredible because his Lordship's in the library. Stephen's the butler, uh, played by Anthony Hopkins, of course, goes in and says, uh, good morning, but, ah, Stevens, you know, and he said um, about the under-butler and the, uh, I think it was the assistant housekeeper that ran off. Yes, yes, bad business. said, I think I found a replacement. And he said, name, says his lordship. And he goes, Stevens, he goes, that's your name. Yes, he's my father, my lord. Ah, like to meet him sometime. He's outside at the moment, my lord. Well, bring him in. <laughs> Ah, and uh, that's it done, he says to his father. You must be very proud. Very proud, my lord. <laughs> yeah. He goes, well, good to see you. And he said, welcome, welcome on board. And that's him hired. Uh, Scott McClear, I was listening to a radio. I'm angry that the media are pushing for the lockdown to be relaxed. The presenter and the rumour is the 8th of May. We are the worst of this pandemic. Um, and they are putting false hope in people and the chance to spread this virus out of control. Yes, I think we need to uh, take a tough line with this. There shouldn't be any speculation. Do you know? I mean, there shouldn't be any of that. Unless a firm date is announced by the government, the lockdown goes on. We have to try and uh, stop the halt of this virus. Have you ever seen a movie called An Inspector Calls? No, but I'm very familiar with the play An Inspector Calls. So there you are. And uh, I've seen it many times. Uh, yes, what did I say no there? Yes, I have. of course I'm familiar with it. Absolutely. I don't know why I said no. But uh, An Inspector Calls, very famous play. Uh, so there you go. Um, great movie. Watched it a few times. Binge watching Downton Abbey. That's great too. Aaron Foy, John Marshall, Jim Panton, Thomas P. Dennis Colling. Uh, right, let's get tuned in, guys. What's going on here? This is ridiculous. These figures need to be up, up, up into the thousands. Last week, I think we had 5,600 to one of our pop-ups, very nice. And uh, we should have the same. And I don't want people going, okay, is it not kind of the same? No. Each show is entirely different. So there we are. It has its own character. And whether we're early in the morning or not doesn't matter. There we are. Get yourselves organized and get up for it. Ah, there we are. Just share it to the Scott McClure fan group, guys. About 3,000 of you on there to date. All join these groups. Feel free to join the Scott McClure fan group. Uh, Billy McKee is watching. Susan Forrest is watching. Lauren Kirkwood. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Lauren. Lovely to have you with us on today's pop-up. Kelvin Allen's watching. David Lafferty. Scotty, I was watching Zed Cars last night. It brings back memories. Have a great day. Z Victor 1 to BD. Z Victor 1 to BD. 
This is BD. Go ahead, Z Victor One. Also, I'm there in, is it Newport, they call the place? And you've got uh, PC Fancy Smith. And uh, James Ellis was the sergeant. Um, who else is the Z car? Stratford Johns, Charlie Barlow, Inspector Barlow, James Watt, Frank Windsor, James Watt. So there we are. Um, was it James Watt? John Watt. I think it was John Watt. If anybody remembers Z cars, was it uh, John Watt? So there we are, Inspector um, Charlie Barlow and John Watt. Frank Windsor played, I think. Telling Ted to tell Ted to tell Ted, Thomas Peden. I thank you. Get that message out there. Lauren Kirkwood, you're a legend, Scotty. I thank you, Lauren, and dinky-doo. Lovely, as I say, to have you with us. I will stick with the action, horror, or sci-fi films. Kareem, I'm not terribly good on horror, and I'm not terribly good on sci-fi. I got offered a part in a horror movie. Well, I mean, looking like me, I would, you know. But um, no, I, I, I turned it down. So there we are. I turned it down. Gus Peter's watching. What a top man. Ali Bryson, dinky-doo, lovely to have you with us. Louise Arrell is watching. Dinky-doo, Louise, top photographer. Snap, snap. Beautiful stuff. Real creative eye you've got, Louise Arrell. Uh, Scotty, for a change from Corona, uh, your views on the SPFL voting uh, scandal unfolding. Ali, I, I wouldn't comment on something like that, to be quite honest. Two reasons. One, we can't really comment on it. And two, um, I don't really want to get involved in that sort of thing. I also don't really know enough about it. So there you are. I know Scotty McClure knows everything about everything. But there are certain things. Uh, Gordon Sterling is filling us in here. An inspector calls by J.B. Priestley. Did that for my higher English in 1976. Now, I also think J.B. Priestley, John Boynton Priestley, yes, used to stay at an old friend of mine's hotel. That's my claim to J.B. Priestley. Uh, it was a bit of a pipe and slippers type. And um, I had English 1976, absolutely gone, and I'm sure you would get it out there in East Lothian. Excellent education. Um, J.B. Priestley also wrote The Good Companions, and I think he came up with Dinky Doo in some of his work. So there you go. And I also think George Formby. And then I just came up with it uh, as well. Uh, so there we are, uh, from an actor friend of mine that used to say it. What's your plans today, says Lauren Kirkwood. My plans, Lauren are to have the best day of my life to date, right? This is what we've all got to decide. Don't buy into the whole lockdown thing. I popped on the news last night to see if they mentioned coronavirus, and I was not disappointed. They did indeed. So it's, uh, it's the big story at the moment. But don't buy into too much um, news and what have you. So catch up in a little bit, and then you can't do anything about this apart from do what you're asked, right? You didn't start the virus, but of course, you could be carrying the virus. You could spread the virus. So the trick is to stay in, but to plan your life, all right? Very important. This is why one of the reasons I do the pop-ups is because it allows people to have a normal hour in the morning to come and join us. This is why I'm so hot on spreading the word that we're on. You can have the finest show in the world, and I would actually argue this is the finest show in the world. I do not genuinely believe there is a piece of television or radio 
that will beat this program, particularly during the lockdown period. So I would strongly suggest that you tell everybody you possibly can via social media that this program's on at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning. It's live. It goes on till 11 o'clock. There's no reason not to stay for the whole program. And I think it's very, very important that we get the word out there because everybody who has a Facebook account should be able to see Scotty McClue's live pop-up. So I'm sorry if you get a lot of stuff through from McClue, but that's the thinking behind it. All right. I am the catalyst. This is the people's program. Okay, so that's what's going on there, guys. Uh, very, very important. And uh, nothing throughout the world. All these shows, television, radio, millions and millions and millions of viewers, get yourselves on here. Stick the telly and radio off and come on and have a chit-chat live with the rest of us. Wonderful. Just doing some more sharing, guys. Let everybody know it's on, dink you do. So that's my plans for today, Laura, to have the finest day of my life so far. Uh, Scott, have you been watching the three-part drama on STV called Quiz? I have, Jack. It's about the people who cheated on who wants to be a millionaire in 2001 and almost got away with a million quid. So there we are. Well, um, yes, we shall see what's what. What would the ideal TV be? How would you act in Scotty? The ideal TV, how would I act? Um, well, I would act as to what the part required, right? Now, I am an actor. I'm trained as an actor. I work as an actor. I uh, teach as an actor. I direct other actors. So... Um, you know, it's all there. So what sort of part would I play? There's so many parts because there aren't that many older actors. Not that I'm saying I'm old, but older actors because a lot of actors get thoroughly fed up with just being unemployed, um, you know, because they have this wonderful art and they also would like to make it. And... Um, what is making it? What is success? As uh, James Bridie would have argued, who had, I think, six hits running in the West End at the one time. Yes, a good Glasgow man, Dr. O.H. Maver, James Bridie. So I would act as the part required. Uh, so we could play a nice guy or we could play a real buddy. Real buddy, have a nice death, Mr. Bond. <laughs> uh, Linda Snelling's watching. Somebody said I would make a very good Q in the uh, in the Bond films. Although you're following such a legend as Desmond Llewellyn. For goodness sake, Bond, don't damage it, you know. That sort of stuff. Who else was Q? John Cleese was Q, wasn't he? Uh, have you thought about uh, Scotty McClure merchandise? Merch? Thomas, I think we've got a Scotty McClure badge somewhere. I'll have a look. I'm sure we've got Scotty McClure badges somewhere. Uh, there used to be a lot of serious merch for Scotty McClure. Dinky do, Scotty boys. This is Jason McHugh. Dave Anderson's watching. Dinky do, Dave. Wonderful man. Um, James Watt was an inventor from Greenock. Famous for his steam engine. He was. And if you go on to, uh, well, two things I can tell you. If you go on to Scotty McClure's YouTube channel, just put into your search engine, YouTube, Scotty McClure talks to David Heyman. Right? Wonderful, wonderful actor. And you'll get an interview I did with David Heyman and uh, a radio interview. The man is outstanding. And you see him in so many things. Lovely guy to talk to as well. Morning, Scotty Dinky Doo, says Robert Rivers. Absolutely. Uh, do you remember Dave, David Heyman as, a, as Jimmy Boyle? Yes, in The Hard Man by STV. 
fantastic. And the wonderful Bill Brown at STV had to really fight to get that movie through. So there we are, a fabulous movie, amazing movie. STV, brilliant company, Scottish television. Take it here, Scotty McClure, the sky is blue. Will Paul, we're in the Costa del Mayfield, listening to you, lovely. I send love to Mayfield. Please stay in, everybody, and don't end up blue. So there we are. So the poem goes, Dinky Doo, Scotty McClue, the sky is blue. We're at Custard on Mayfield, listening to you. Please stay in, everybody, and don't end up blue. Ooh, a bit frightening. Uh, Gordon Stelling, Uddingston Grammar School, the hotbed of talent in the 70s. We were all well read by the time we got flung out. Uddingston Grammar School, classic education. The Scottish academies and grammar schools. Wonderful. Um, and the high schools, of course, Scotty McClure. When I was a teen in the late 90s, I loved the talk shows like Ricky Lake, etc. I think you'd be amazing at hosting a Glasgow 30-minute talk show looking at all the issues in society, uh, brief history, cars, boats, etc. It would be very exciting. Yes, well, we like to do that, Gordon. Uh, true Kareem, we're in Scotland, a good couple of weeks behind London, Leeds Bradford, Leeds Stroke Bradford, etc. Sorry, Leeds forward slash Bradford, etc. From where the outbreak began to radiate, it would be insanity at this point. China has begun to creep up again. Yes. And, uh, three more, uh, as well as probably due to relaxation of travel restrictions. Well, I did tell you about uh, my distant relative, the wonderful John Crofton. So John Crofton, who cured tuberculosis, right? You could catch tuberculosis just by by talking to somebody, by being in the same room. So, and uh, tuberculosis, TB, it was a dreadful, dreadful thing. We still have it with us in society, but not as a pandemic. And so many people in the 20s, 30s, 40s, going way back, I think, I'm not sure, the medics will tell me if physis, so P-T-H-Y-S-I-S, is that how you say it? The physis. Um, I'm not sure if that was uh, an early form of TB, but uh, round terrific thoracic um, chest problems, cardiovascular problems, Back the 1700s, 1800s, mid-1800s, the plague, bubonic plague, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, so there we go. And John Crofton, in 1948, with the streptomycin, cured TB. But the problem was the body gave the impression it had gone, so the medication was stopped. Keep the medication going, was the answer. Do you have a favourite TV show? Oh, Lauren Kirkwood, a favourite TV show. My favourite TV show would be uh, Scotty McClure. We're saying that uh, particular commercial television and public service broadcasting are missing out big style at the moment because this show could be live on commercial television. So you have any contacts in commercial television as of today. I was thinking I had top, top, top referees in commercial television. And sadly, they've all passed away now. You know, it's crazy. I used to be able to phone any chance of whatever. Of course, what's it for? They would scribble it down. Only ask, only ask, Scotty. You're very welcome. Sadly, they've passed away. Clear. It's a well-known fact you are the Laurence Olivier of Mary Hill. Absolutely. Not many of us left. The wonderful Kenny Hyde is watching. Morning, Kenny. Great to have you with us, and thanks for reminding me of that wee story yesterday. So there we go. Um, happy 15th birthday to my brother Lewis in Bishop Auckland. So there we are. Wonderful, Ali. Uh, Kenny, I remember I was uh, looking at buying a jag for a friend and I could see it had had a wee kiss, a wee kiss as we see in the motor trade. You know, it had had a wee bump. And uh, I said to the salesman, 
and said, uh, would there be any movement in the price? And he went, not really, so no. He said, uh, the price has moved as far as it will. And uh, I said, it's just, uh, um, I said, tell him. Oh, that was it. I said to my friend, tell him. And so he said, it would appear the car has been in an accident. He said, I very much doubt that, sir. And I said, well, could we just show you? <laughs> you know, when the customer knows the car better than the salesman. Molly Scotty, the Amy 8 was a fantastic little estate car you had in your wonderful car collection over the years. I think it had the umbrella gear change like the 2CV and the Diane. A eh, no, Kenny. Funnily enough, the Amy had a floor change. And... um I drove for a living at the time, and my boss said to me, he said, when you drive the works vehicle, he said, your driving is outstanding. You can park it in its own length. He said, however, when you're out in your own car, you're like death on wheels. So that was, that was his thing to me at the time, because the little yellow Amy, um, which, uh, which I'd bought, from a garage in, in Guruk. And the little yellow Amy was outstanding. And it toured all over the country. Fabulous little estate. And you could throw it in and out of corners. I wasn't death on wheels because this car could really handle the road. It had an umbrella handbrake. That's what you'll be remembering. And a bright yellow with brown, uh, Brown cloth seats. Scotty, a part in River City taking over Lenny's taxi firm and uses control room. Turn it into a radio station for Shield Inch. The ratings would go through the roof. <laughs> Fantastic. Red saucer brown on a fish supper, Scotty. And if Edinburgh salt and sauce. Well, you know, in Edinburgh, yes, salt and sauce. Um, I quite enjoyed it. There was a lovely chippy in Leith. And also at the top of uh, Leith Walk, I used to quite often get my chips from just opposite the playhouse. And um, I enjoyed the salt and sauce. You know, it was rather good because I don't actually take vinegar on a fish supper anyway. I, um, you know, I like to uh, drink diluted, heavily diluted, I hasten to add, uh, apple cider vinegar. Uh, that's quite good, but um, I don't take it out of his supper. So I enjoyed the brown sauce. So I loved my time working in Leith in Edinburgh and uh, living in Edinburgh for three years. Well, just outside East Lothian. Gordon uh, Sterling will know exactly what we're talking about. More sharing, guys. The numbers are dropping. Get these numbers up. It's all up to you, you know. I can only do so much. And then you have to join in and share, 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 share. Yesterday was a fabulous show, by the way. Very, very good results, too. I noticed there's been about, is it 12, 1,200, 1,200 joined us? But everybody on, pardon me, everybody on Facebook should be joining this show. It's for an hour. Uh, Lauren Kirkwood, Scotty, a part in Derry Girls. The girls could visit Scotland and come on your radio show, talk about problems in Ireland, and just having a laugh. That would be some episode. Just an idea. <laughs> Fantastic, Lauren. Yes, indeed. We like the Derry Girls, don't we? Wonderful stuff. Right, share. Um, I'm sharing to... Scotty McClue, global radio and television producer. I think we can uh, give me that one, can't we? I've got to give you that. Did anybody ever hear the shows with the great James Bunn, the medium? Fabulous, you know. And uh, boy, could he sort out the Doubting Thomases. They, uh, it was just amazing to watch him work live now. Right, that's gone out to... Uh, the Scotty McClue page. Excellent stuff. Uh, Johnny Garvey has joined us. Good morning, Scotty. How are you this fine day? Johnny Garvey, I am always better for hearing from you. You should Skype me. You know, Scotty.McClue. 
uh, get on the Skype, John Garvey, and let's have a good old chit-chat. So there we are. Excellent stuff. Big share, everybody. Sharing, sharing, sharing as much as you possibly can. And uh, are we getting up in the morning? We, we had a discussion about the best time. And somebody said, just whenever you're on, Scotty, is the best time. I think 10 o'clock's good, but are there some lazy bones kipping in? There might be a bit of that. Hello, Scotty, says Thomas Hamilton. Hello, Thomas. Scotty, they should do a spin-off still game. You married to Isa. What a partnership. Oh, Isa. Isa, don't. Oh, it's, I'll just, Scotty, I'll just go in and tell Jack and Victor. Don't tell them, Isa. Don't be spreading gossip. Well, well what else are you to do with it, Scotty? <laughs> All that stuff, wouldn't it? Yes, very good. We can get uh, the right. If there's another still game, there might be a part for Scotty McClure. Wonderful. And uh, I was wondering, I know I saw before the lockdown that the job as the head of BBC Scotland was up for grabs. And I wondered if I should apply. Um, I remember when the great late Sir Robin Day applied to be the uh, director general of the BBC. I think his pals had pushed him and said, come on, you're, you know, an Oxford graduate, you're a knighted man. Everybody in the country, everybody in the world knows you. Get in for the job. And uh, he went in for the job and they asked him, they said, what experience do you have of running an organization of uh, whatever it was, 27,000 people and controlling a budget of uh, X billion pounds? And he went, not at all. And they said, thank you, Sir Robin. Are there any further questions? And that was his book for Director General for the BBC. So I am told. I wasn't on the board and I wasn't there. Um, but I have uh, applied for a number of jobs with the BBC over the years and um, had some very interesting boards with some very senior people. So there we are. I remember a snotty person in uh, personnel, as it was in those days, sending back, she said, this is a senior position. And I said, this is why I have applied. Uh, I think a show with you and James Nisbet would be good. Oh, what a talented actor James Nisbet is. Wonderful man. Uh, so there we are. Now, there's another wonderful actor. All the different things that James has been in. Have a look at it. Huge, you know, terrific guy. Right, uh, how else are we getting, how are we getting on with the sharing, guys? Come on. There's no excuse for everybody not watching, and there's no excuse for everybody not joining us. So there we are. I'll just share again now in public and let them know. Wonderful. Um, I said to somebody the other day, how come when we pop up, some days we get a few thousand, other days we get a few hundred? And so, well, people are busy doing things. I said, no. You don't get that discrepancy, so it must be who can actually see it at the time, I think. That's the thing. Who can actually see it at the time? Um, who was wanting a tune? A wee tune, was it Karim? Hmm. Now, if you've just joined us, can you admire my Danoon Pottery mug? This is a wonderful business. Danoon pottery and they would turn out the most beautiful ceramics look at that isn't that gorgeous the old boys fishing there we are I've got so much I've got quite a collection of Danoon pottery Argyle pottery and what I'm having from it today is a, a lovely lovely cup of Earl Grey tea Robert Rovers, I went to the cobblers. I said, I'm much to get my shoes sold. A tenner was the reply. How much to get them healed? A fiver was the reply. I said, that's great. Could you heal them up to the toe, please? I remember going into a shop in Argyle. My laces are broken. Uh, a song and a joke, Scotty McLeary. Thank you, Scotty McLeary. Says Kareem, right, Kareem. We'll get you a song. Um, I, I'm just thinking what you would like. 
Uh, right, I'll play you something um, on. Uh, I'll play you something on the pipe organ. How about that? Play you something on the pipe organ. A wee, a wee, a nice wee tune on the pipe organ. Uh, yes. Can you reach in on the pipe organ? All right. Are we ready for that? Fair enough. No problem at all. Um. <laughs> pipe organ for you this morning never a dull moment on Scotty McClure's pop-ups I say wonderful stuff so that was it yes absolutely I remember taking my shoes in and I said to the guy this is true I said can you do anything for these poor souls <laughs> I love the way that top crafts people always go for <laughs> And the element of doubt. And then they come good. Have you noticed that? They go for an element of doubt. So you take your shoes into a real top cobbler. And they pick them up. They will look at them like this. And go. I very much doubt it. It's a shame you didn't come to me sooner. I mean, these are kind of past their best, you know. Do you want to leave them with me? <laughs> then you we call that's your shoes, man, dude. You're back, they're absolutely outstanding. I used to have shoes and they were of such quality that you sent them back to the makers, right, in Northampton. Because um, it's a bit like when London had streets for different different things. So German Street sold shirts. You had different places in the country that did a certain thing. So the potteries, Staffordshire, all that sort of idea. And steel from Sheffield. You got a, your knives and forks were all stamped Sheffield steel. You know, wonderful, great engineering. And Northampton was the centre of shoemaking. You see, this is something we should look at again for um, the four countries of the UK. What are you best at doing? Like Glasgow used to do uh, tobacco and sugar and all that. Greenock did sugar and shipping. These kind of things. And I think we should be looking at that. Anyway, the other great one I've got was... The old-fashioned ironmongers, of which, sadly, there are less of them. Um, and when I stayed in a flat in Great Western Road in Glasgow, I used to run across the road, and there was the most wonderful ironmonger. But have you not noticed that when you take something into an ironmonger's, now it might be something Victorian, even, that's come adrift in your flat. It might just be a wee hook, but you hand it to him. I mean, I don't know what this is, but it was something like this. You go, hello, there's a queue. There's always a queue, and you can barely get into the shop for stuff. And they all smell of that mix of paraffin and um, disinfectant, 
pine disinfectant and paraffin. Uh, that was a great one because people had little paraffin stoves, little Aladdins to keep the chill off the hallway in the house because you had to go out to the big table in the hall where the phone was. So you froze to death on the phone. I think that kept the call short someday. So you'd be sitting in the sitting room by the fire and then the phone would ring, bring, bring, an old-fashioned bell. So I'd say, oh, is that the phone? That was always this kind of nonsense. You know, I mean, that people came out with, was that the phone? Oh, I, I, well, looking at you, they say, well, you go and get it. You know, we don't answer the phone. We're, we're a generation before. So you went up and you got the phone, you know, and you gave it, uh, hello, 912529499. Now, you didn't actually, you picked it up. You said, hello, nine, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, um, then you went in and you said to your mom or your dad, that's for you, it's Auntie Bessie. Uh, oh, right. Oh, big. Oh, right. Had to stop watching the telly. They then went out to the hall and stood and froze, you know, while they took the phone call. So that was that. And there was a phone book there beside it. And there was usually a drawer, a table with a drawer in it. And the drawer was full of nonsense, like um, batteries, candles, matches. Uh, electrical adapters. Anyway, long story short, you went into the Anmungas and you stood in this queue. You sometimes had to queue outside, a bit like now. And then you went in and there was a wee bit of counter uh, that hadn't got anything on it except a measuring, a brass measuring rod. And you said to the Anmunga, hello, uh, would you by any chance have one of these? And he took it and he went like this. No, no, I very, very much doubt you'll get one of these now. Um, just give me a minute. And he went and got a wooden ladder and clambered up to the ceiling, rummaged about and came down and handed you it. Well, there you go. You say, what What do you for that? A 8P. And that was a trip to the Armbungers. It was absolutely fabulous. Uh, so there we go. And talk about hygiene. A trip to the butchers. Tell you about that in a minute. Love that, Scotty. There we are. Impressive stuff, Scotty. Yeah, absolutely. Hello. Say hi to my mum. She's a fan. Mum, dinky do. Top of the morning to you, I see. Or if you're in the north, a bit more of that, Mum. That's the stuff. Where are we, Lauren? Where are we actually talking accent-wise? Uh, I used to get angry when you slagged off single parents. Did you, Linda Lucia Brown? Why? I was trying to um, get people a better quality of life, and I was also raising your plight. So there you are. I raised, or not your plight, but the plight of the single parents. Um, I am Lauren's mum. We're now homeowners. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. I will. I will. <laughs> oh, they've got their own race. <laughs> Fantastic. Wonderful Linda Lucia Brown. Super. And bless you both. Good luck to you, I say. Uh, Scott McLean, the merchandise idea is good. The shop could be on your website. Starting off with small pens and badges. I'd buy a few. Ah, Kareem. Yes, a little bit of merch. So there we go. Peter Connolly's watching Nikki Graham. Dinky do, Scotty, from a cold, dull Glasgow. I hope you're well. Well, Nikki, given that we're all staying in. So there we are. And I think we should be getting free gas and electricity during the lockdown. So there, that would be good if the government could do that. So I noticed they wrote off 13 and a half billion uh, for a loan for the NHS last week. So there you are. So I'm sure they could manage to, um, to write off all the gas and electricity. Just that sort of stuff. Get it at cost price. No profiteering allowed. 
That should be a big thing. There should be no profiteering allowed during the lockdown. Excellent stuff. Now, let me know if you're ready for a trip to the butchers. That was a trip to the Anmongers. Now I'll do you a trip to the butchers when you're ready, but you must tell me if you are ready. Very, very important. Just going to share again, guys, to one of the big groups, if you can all do the same. That would be fantastic. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Let everybody know that we're on and uh, come and join us. Can you all share as well, guys? The wonderful Alistair King has joined us. Good morning, Alistair. Noah four time is this Ian Fife. Noah four time. So that's it. Fife. Uh, right. Uh, what group am I sharing with? One of the big Facebook ones. I think just to let them all know. There's an event. Am I an event? There we are. I will share in a group. I think that's important. The government should be giving us free food too. I know, Nikki Graham. Keep your strength up. So there we are. But I've gone back to having um, older-fashioned food like uh, a beef drink. You know, no names, no pack drill. That sort of idea. And, uh, and, and things like that. Tatties. Tatties. What are the tatties? There we are. Can I get on to that? Um, good. Bit of sharing there, guys. Very good. Another wee sip of the tea. Morning, Scotty. I'm a wee bit late, so I'll have to re-watch. We don't mind people picking it up on the re-watch if they're late. Uh, do you know how to make a radio transmitter? I've got a walkie-talkie, but there's never anything on it. Not everybody has Facebook, so they're missing out on your great show. Louise Arrow, you are an extremely kind lady. Um, they are missing out on it, big style. I have to agree with you. But I'm afraid that um, a transmitter would have to be licensed. Although I built my first official radio station when I was nine, and I uh, could broadcast in the house, and I believe it, you could get it on the car radio in the garage. So my father and grandfather were sitting in the car listening to my uh, nine-year-old broadcast. The broadcasts of a nine-year-old. How do you throw a space party, says Kareem? You plan it. So there we go. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. So there we go. I uh, actually knew a gentleman who was there when they split the atom. Oh, yes. You'll listen to all these claims and go, ah, away, my clue. All 100% fact, just like myself. Wonderful stuff. So there you are. I'm very, very lucky in my life in that I've met so many interesting people and so many important people and so many lovely important people and one or two that think they're important and are less lovely. So there you are. Larry Donaldson, thank you, do. So lovely to have you with us and a very warm welcome. You haven't told me what accent we're using. Um, is, it, uh, is it the north or is it the south? There we are. A little softer for the north and the south. Fantastic. Yeah, get sharing, guys. Share with your biggest groups. Share with massive groups. That's what I'd like to do. Yeah, I think that's very important. We can get out to as big a group as possible. So if some of you have got somebody, you think, oh, I can share that. I've got thousands. Scotty, my postman complained that my dog keeps chasing him in his bike. The dog's in the huff. Now, as I've taken the bike off him, we love it. I'm back, Scotty, says Lauren. Dinky do, Lauren. You didn't tell me what accent I'm using. Fiona McCree, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McCree. Guys, if you've just joined me and you're thinking, what on earth's going on? You are watching the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and the world's most humble man with a live pop-up just for you. Dinky do. Um, what did one plate say to the other plate? 
Dinner is on me. Tell you a lovely story. People were touring. What is it? What's the big one? The route right across. Is it uh, Route 66 right across the centre of America? And uh, people were on that. And uh, they'd stopped off at a roadhouse that was just run by one old hillbilly boy. And uh, what they would do, they said, your plates are beautifully clean. Uh, and he said, uh, yep, they're as clean as cold water can get them. So that was that. And when they were leaving, the dog was uh, out as they were driving off. And the old boy says, cold water, you come in now. So there we go. What did the Dalmatian say after lunch? That hit the spot. Whoa! Uh, Alice the King, for my birthday this month, I decided to raise money for the Scottish Air Ambulance. There's a link on my Facebook if anyone wishes to donate anything. Thank you, Alistair King. And I hope that goes extremely well. Um, so there we are. Alistair King, one of our top engineers there. Wonderful. And his birthday link. Right, another big group. Sharing, sharing. Sharing, sharing, sharing. We talked about this last week at a Sunday school. We used to sing, hear the pennies dropping, listen while they fall. Everyone for Jesus, he shall have them all. Dropping, 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 listen while they fall. Everyone for Jesus, he shall have them all. And we put an old-fashioned penny. They have got one like it. It was a thing about that size. And we used to pop that in the dish. So there you go. Never a dull moment, I say. Uh, right, I want to share with uh, a big group here. And this is quite slow. So you have to just go with it, guys. There we are. There we are. Yes, Facebook. Right. Here we go. Ah, that's the one, isn't it? That's definitely the one. There we are. That's gone. That should uh, let everybody know that we are live. Sharing, sharing, sharing. Uh, I think they got the best similar actors for quiz. Oh, quiz is superb. The guy playing Chris Tarrant is excellent. Uh, top actor. There you are. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Right. So I was going to tell you about um, a visit to the butchers, how different that was. So now you probably go to the supermarket and you go up to the beef counter and you order something and they'll cut that for you. But more likely, it's in a sealed plastic square tray. Uh, so there you are. Scott McLean, if you're going on a holiday, what's the destination? Or oh, it would be Scotland, Karim. I'm a terrible man for Scotland. Although I have dear, dear, dear lovely friends. And uh, Jack says he must have studied them for ages. Yes, studied Chris Tarrant. Absolutely, Jack. Uh, for quiz, for the show quiz, ITV. Uh, nine o'clock, am I right? And um, I've got lovely, lovely friends near Heraklion on Crete. So, uh, you know, when all this is finished, I might ask them if I can come for a week. It's just beautiful out there. Um, can't celebrate, Scotty, whilst there's people passing away with the virus. So it's my way of doing something well to help. Absolutely, Alistair King. But remember, although people are passing away with the virus, we all have a duty to keep as well and cheerful as possible, right? And that is our duty, Alistair. So there we are. So I won't stop comedy during the virus. Obviously, deep, deep, deep respect to those suffering, condolences to those that have lost loved ones. Nobody cares more than McClure, I can tell you. But I also won't stop my comedy or my lightheartedness because it's so important to human survival. So there you are, very, very important. Now, so a visit to the local butcher. So now you would see your mince or your steak in a plastic tray all sealed. All right. 
Uh, I'd like to open and pass through it. I'd like to stay for the weekend. Kareem Zachariah. There are many lovely places to stay in Oban and round about. You, you, you could go for a nice B&B. Um, I had a lovely time at a B&B just opposite the old Oban High School that they were pulling down. This gorgeous old, looked like a granite building, and they were demolishing it. Oban High School, the old Oban High School. Uh, Nicky Graham says, I can't wait for the butchers to open back up again because I prefer to buy my meat from the butchers rather than supermarkets because it's fresher out of the butchers. So, if you're a meat person, you went to the butcher now, the doors of the shop were permanently open, right? The window was very often open. And in the window was a selection of Mince just a big plastic, a white plastic tray, an actual tray that you'd serve tea on in the window with a huge big dodo mince on it. Some chops, some steaks, things like that, all put out for display. You then went into the butchers and the floor was covered in sawdust. There was probably several butchers working and there was maybe one that owned the shop. So you said to him, Morning, sir. Morning, Mr. McWackle. Morning, Bert. Hello, son. Uh, what can I get you now? While you queued, there was always a massive queue. But while you queued at the butchers, once you get into the shop, you are very often leaning on a cow that was hanging up on chains. There were several of them. There were pigs hanging up. There were sheep hanging up. And you'd be leaning on them having a conversation, right? On the great big fat skin. Well, they're all skinned, but just the, the great big carcass. And uh, then when you got to the butcher, you'd say, hello, son, how are you? How's your mum? And you'd say, oh, she's fine, thanks. She's getting better. She's a wee cold. Oh, you tell her I'm asking for her. Maybe send her some fluids. So it was this kind of chat, great patter, great banter. And then he had, he had meat and blood all down his apron at the front. And uh, very often nothing on his head, or sometimes a kind of boater, a straw boater. But very often nothing in his head. And he would wipe his hands down the apron and say, what can I get you, son? You could say, could I have four chops, please? Four chops, son? I brought that, and he would show you with his axe. He would hold up the chops, then he'd go... Wallop, 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 wallop. Say, what else? And say, and could I get half a pound of mince, please? Half a pound of mince, son. Um, and he would just put his hands into the mince, lift up half a pound, throw it in the scale, and it would be spot on. He didn't take any off, but he might even add a wee dodo on, and it went a wee bit over. So that's just over. I suppose that was for more money as well, but it was a, there was a kindliness element. Then you'd ask for some bacon, and he would get the big slicer. Six slices of bacon. Now he would wrap all that up in greaseproof paper, and then he would um, either put it in a paper bag or a piece of brown paper and wrap it up. If it was a big parcel, he would tie it. You stuck it under your arm, and you walked out the shop, and I don't ever remember anyone getting ill from anything out of the butchers. So they are. I don't ever remember any listeria or a, a food poisoning or anything like that. And that was the old hygiene setup. And there were other beasts hanging up in the back. There was a big fridge. You could also buy dripping to fry in, which was absolutely delicious. And you could also, uh, I mean, I once went on a high fat diet. This is not a joke. And I lost two stone quite quickly. So I was having sausage and egg and all the rest of it. Very few carbs, although my muscles were complaining. So I had a few more carbs and a bit of weight went back on, of course. Stephen Mooney, Dean do, but I mean, I, I'm mainly muscle, as you know. So that was it. So that was your trip to the butchers. Now, 
If you go into the supermarket, you might see them spraying a bit of antiseptic on the counter and that. Then if your meats sat on that, surely it's absorbing antiseptic. Antiseptic gets into your gut. It could kill off the good bacteria in your gut. See where I'm going with this. Quite interesting. So we're talking old-fashioned style versus new style. Yes, what do we think of that? Stephen Mooney is watching, dinky do. Got to go, Scotty. Take care. Hope you enjoy the last part of the quiz. I have to go. We're out of time, Jack. Guys, it's been a blast. You're beautiful people. Keep well, keep wise. Stay fabulous. And we'll all meet tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock sharp. Your job is to tell everyone about it. Until tomorrow, dinky do. See you tomorrow, Scotty. Dinky do, says Robert. Dinky do, Scotty. Have a good day. Speak tomorrow, dinky do, from Kareem. Ta-ra,